Hey, welcome to Games with Trev. I'm Monique and this is... Trev. Today we're going to be talking about Dog Park. Dog Park is a one to four player game where you recruit dogs and walk them at the dog park. Dog Park is a new game for us. This game came out maybe maybe a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. We were in the game store looking for a different game and we saw it and because Monique loves dogs, we just had to get it. And the artwork is so cute, it really entices us to come get it. Although Dog Park is a simple game, it's super easy and fun to bring out and play with new players. Today we're gonna be talking to you about some of our favorite things of this game. The first major thing of the game, of course, is the board. The board is awesome. It's got like a watercolor, almost S-like to it. And we'll put it here. It's so pretty. It's so fun. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but basically to give you an overview of the board, down here is called the field. This is where you're going to be recruiting dogs. This is the actual dog park. This right here are rounds with round goals. This is the breed expert column. And this right here is the point track that goes around the side of the board. So there's a lot of things going on, but despite this, it's still pretty simple to learn and play. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of moving pieces. It is very much so like the same actions every turn. And there's not new things to happen until the very end of the game. Yeah. The other awesome part about this game is that the standard version of the game already comes with a really awesome box insert. True. Which sounds so nerdy when I say it, but it's awesome. All the little pieces come out in these dog bone like trays and it's super cool. Because <laughs> some boxes they just give you a bunch of plastic bags and they expect you just to throw it in there. But this game gives you a really great tray to put everything away. So true. Something I really enjoy about this game are the dog cards. Um, as you'll notice, each dog card is specific to a breed and each has a playing cost on the side of it and a power up to play during walking phase or a different phase of the game. Mm -hmm. The one thing I did notice about this game is that most of the powers for each of the dogs are actually the same power. There's not a diff there's not a lot of variety to the different powers, mm -hmm. which is why it's easy to teach someone new is because they're not having to read the card every single time because there's only so many. There's like I think eight or ten total. Even with the two expansions that bring in two new ones for each of those. It's like only 12 total. And so it's not a lot. I really wish there was more variety in, in that aspect because there'd be like more fun things that could happen. Yeah. Or if you're, if like you could do like, a, if like an opponent plays this type of dog, then you get to do this or something like that. That would be cool to see. Something that does make the dogs a little bit more difficult to play are these um, values that you have to fill to walk them. If they have three, or two of more expensive um, either toys or treats and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to play that dog and I do like that mm -hmm. um, but I didn't really see any continuity of which dogs were more difficult to play they're just kind of mix in there which is a good thing um, yeah. I do like that actually like we prefaced earlier this game is not a hard game it really is an easy game to learn that's why it, None of these things are bad things we're talking about. We're just saying that we play a lot of board games and we notice that it's easier to put the dogs out than you think it would be. Like we mentioned earlier, we super like the pieces of this game. As you can tell, they're super detailed and the colors are super fun to look at. So definitely a plus of this game. Mm -hmm. Now the one aspect I did mention that is difficult or hard about this game is the very end. And they have to deal with these breed cards. What you do at the very beginning of the game, you set them all out in a row like this. And the top card is going to be the most popular dog and it's going to get the most amount of points at the end of the game. So if you have the most pastoral dogs in this case, you'd get eight points at the end of the game, which is actually the biggest bonus ever. But the hard part is, is that everyone knows this the whole game and so you have to be careful because Everyone else is trying to go for the same ones, and honestly, it might be worth it to get the lower point values because you can sweep them all up. This is where one of my favorite aspects of the game comes in. It is called voting when you're recruiting your dog. So each player is going to choose a point number to spend on the dog of their choice. And so it's kind of fun to see what everyone bets on whichever dog, and I think it's a really fun aspect of the game. Mm-hmm. 
The one hard part is, is that if you're playing a two-player game like we've done, is you have to add a third bot player. The bot player basically is going to go after the most highly valued dog of that game every single time. And what they're going to do is you're going to go against them rolling a dice. And the dice has values from one to four, which make it super hard to get it because more likely than not, they're going to roll higher than two or three and get those higher point values to get the top dog. So you're probably not going to get the top dog if you're playing with a bot. The other aspect about the game that you can get a lot of points in is objective cards. Objective cards are awesome because it's another thing you can look forward to and work towards to the end of the game. But in this game, like we've always said, it is easier than you think it's going to be. Some of these objective cards make it seem like it's going to be near impossible to do, but you do it by accident. So like that's the thing though, is like I wish there were harder cards to go after because there's just not. I think like, that would really up the game a little bit more like it is a great game as it is but mm -hmm. i would love to see like an expansion with difficult end of round objectives or like different powers mm -hmm. on the dogs like we were talking about earlier i think that would really uh, make it a lot greater yeah there's like two types of objectives there's like normal objectives and expert objectives don't ever pick the normal objective that's ridiculous <laughs> that's only gonna be worth three points always pick the expert one because you're gonna be able to do it after everything we talked about, I think this is a great gateway game for any beginner. It is super fun, super mm -hmm. easy, and especially if you're a dog lover, you're gonna love every aspect of this game. It's true. It really takes the boating and betting mechanism to a whole new level. It is really fun to do it and go against dogs. It's really cool to almost act like you're like the show dog keeper and you're trying to get the best dog possible. <laughs> it's really fun. So true. So I think definitely this is one to get in your collection if you're just starting out mm -hmm. or love dogs in my instance. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, it's also really great with little kids because it's not very difficult and there's no really take that action so it doesn't make anyone feel bad. So it's really fun to play with anyone and especially younger kids. Yeah, great family game. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching our video about Dog Park where we talked and discussed all about the aspects of Dog Park. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and hit, up, hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. See ya.